Given Australia's remote location, it's always been imperative from the very outset of our nation building that we remain connected to the world to stay ever competitive. But how do we stay at the forefront of this for households and across all industries, from mining to agriculture to businesses in our major capital cities and across such a vast land, while keeping up with rapidly evolving technology? One of the interesting things about Australians, but human beings generally, is how quickly they adapt to changes in technology. I saw some graphs some years ago, I can't recall them specifically now, but it showed the take-up of things like faxes and mobile phones and all the rest of it, Australia compared to the rest of the world. And in nearly every instance, we were way ahead of the curve with regard to uh, our, our ability to pick up new technology, utilise it and develop it even further. So I think that's intrinsic in the Australian setup, and probably caused by the fact we're so isolated, like you've said before, that if we don't start developing it uh, ourselves, it won't be handed to us um, uh, the way it has been in the previous years. But it's, a, it's an exciting area, it's one that never stops changing, and the other reality is the pace of change is ever so faster. OK, so just tell me what this means in terms of the speed of learning, in your opinion, compared with the, the exchange of knowledge that could come going back 30 years ago when you first became the chief executive of a telecommunications company, to today, we're learning more quickly, we're acquiring knowledge more quickly, we're exchanging knowledge more quickly. Yep, and I mean, this is part of the uh, uh, challenge, I guess, the business has got right now after COVID, of how much do you leave it online as against how much do you interact with people? And I think the right answer is somewhere in the middle. Um, one of the challenges with uh, uh, the current setup after COVID is it's hard to translate the DNA of an organisation unless you have face to face contact. So even though Part of your business can be done online and all the rest of it. You still need that people interaction to be able to get the, uh, the, the uh, DNA of an organisation transferred and all the rest of it. So I think it'll be uh, still a few years yet till it, it pans out to what's acceptable to business and what's acceptable to people, because people have put a higher priority on lifestyle now. Uh, because of communication, you can be in wherever and do your job and uh, and uh, not have to travel in, in traffic, you know, an hour and a half each way and all that sort of stuff. So it's it's going to be sort itself out, but it's it's uh, uh, an issue that's not going to go back to what it was. If you think about the speed with which the vaccine came out, phenomenal speed, probably world record in terms of coming up with solutions. Now, that means that scientists around the world have interacted, exchanged ideas. Their knowledge has been improved much more quickly. And that gives me great hope, to tell you the truth, because that can be applied to economic thinking, it can be applied to probably security thinking and other aspects of it, um, because uh, the, the, the race up till then, in my lifetime anyway, was to develop it brand it, keep it, and charge the highest price you can for it, which is, uh, you know, sort of a reputation that the, uh, the chemical companies have, have, have had to bear. But this one was all hands on deck and let's solve the thing. And it's, it gives me great hope for the future if we can have that as a more uh, cooperative way forward. And at the heart of that is telecommunications. Well, because without telecommunications, you don't have that exchange of information, that exchange of ideas. Yeah, it's the speed of processing everything too because it's so much faster if you've got the right telecommunications uh, infrastructure to be able to process things with computer power and all the rest of it. So it's a mixture of all of that. Um, but when you know, people look at the internet and say it's bad, people you know, have had bad experiences in certain areas, but there's a hell of a lot of good about it. And um, it's like anything else that we develop in mankind, there's good, bad and indifferent on it, whether it be a car as against a horse or whatever it is. So I, I'm always one that wants to go with the future rather than say oh, yesterday was better. And if you can capture the future to the full potential that it pre presents, um, you've got an exciting opportunity economically, um, uh, culturally and diversity, all the things that are hot buttons right now. You know, when there's a crisis, industries come together. And when the coronavirus hit, I remember that the government and telecoms operators in Australia did a brilliant job of actually coming together. And we were forward looking at what had happened in Italy, because Italy had had the first crisis and how were people consuming? What was happening when they were in lockdown? What were we seeing on loads on the network? And what did it mean in terms of how you to look at capacity? And so we all came together and worked out that, you know, you're going to get when a network might be designed for business hours of nine to five, now you were seeing peak loads far later into the night as people were together or kids could be um, doing their homework from home or families were watching movies at different times. So crises 
brings together people in a way that can change industries. And you know, we had to upgrade our capacity by 40% to meet the demands of people now working from home. And I think that the way people work has changed forever. I think in the pandemic, government and business have worked really well together. But I think there's a real lesson for Australians about business in the pandemic. First of all, we had great companies with big, strong balance sheets, companies that were able to throw hundreds of millions of dollars at their digital systems so that people could get stuff online. Coles and Woolworths were incredibly well-run companies, able to source products for people, keep our stocks, you know, our, our, our shelves full, manage, you know, really big, uh, issues around things like toilet paper, but also things like GE and ResMed. Helping government gets those, get those ventilators. It's a real story of government business working together and that point about entrepreneurship, innovation, risk taking, and, and, and also on the kind of hard side of it, companies like Qantas just making decisions fast because their fundamental goal was to save the company and you didn't see them kind of wasting six weeks. They quickly said, we've just got to lay, lay people off. Government then coming in and help. It's a great story of community, government, business working together. Enterprise in the field of space exploration is a new growth area and Vocus is now committed to helping companies as they push the boundaries into new frontiers. Everyone's entering the space race in a different way and it's about solving communication and logistics problems around the world. And so what we see, and we've helped these companies to come to Australia, ultimately allowing them to build base stations in regional and remote Australia so that you can bring the satellite down to Earth and communicate and put it across a fibre optic cable and send it back overseas to data centres where they're processing the data. It has to connect to something. And so we're seeing these constellations around the world that are just growing and growing and growing. And ultimately, these companies will have full ubiquitous coverage of the world by September this year. It creates competition, the first thing, and that's good for the consumer because ultimately it will probably drive pricing, pricing models down. It contests the MBN as an alternative, but more importantly, it gets you to regional locations where it is not economically viable to pull fibre. Fibre is expensive when you run fibre networks. You can now turn up a satellite in the middle of the grain belt in southwest uh, Australia and you can get communications, an area that struggled to solve for over the years. So now if I'm a farmer at home, I'll be able to get good communications via low Earth orbit satellites. And this is one of the amazing things about the legacy that's left behind with the pioneers in Australia who laid those cables, the, the politicians even, who thought about those big pictures. It's, it's one of these things where, you know, politicians can be criticised for overcapitalising or not doing the, laying out the, the, the right technology. But the truth is you've just got to do it, don't you? Yep, you do. I was always amazed when, when I was chairman of Telstra, you know, it, it was... Telstra was required to provide a phone to every Australian. The universal service obligation. Yeah. And it's quite staggering when you look at that. I, I don't know how many other countries have it, but um, it meant no matter where you were, you could claim uh, either an expense for getting a phone or getting a phone put in. Um, and it's a great national uh, asset, that sort of uh, exposure. But um, it, it's sometimes very expensive to achieve, but we've managed to achieve it. Now you've got competition. It's not just Telstra doing it, it's other companies as well. So uh, th that quest for um, competitive investment is the key to lower costs, better service and putting the customer first. It's been a, a privilege to be involved uh, in, in an industry like this because, as you said, so much has changed. And the exciting part is it hasn't stopped, it's accelerating. When you look at uh, low Earth orbiting satellites and all the impacts and making rural areas uh, accessible, um, it's just an amazing story when you consider uh, what has happened in the last 50 years, which covers the period that I've been involved in, uh, in telecommunications. And the best is still ahead. Tech has come back in vogue. Fibre has come back in vogue. We're now interesting telecoms companies because effectively we're enabling economies all over the world. We're enabling startup economies. We're enabling highly secured government trading. We're, we're enabling banking and international explosion of 
trading uh, applications. We're enabling Australian farmers to, to get it right to, to send the best possible products around the world and all underpinned by communications. And the demand just grows and grows. So as an industry, we keep evolving. We keep creating new technology that can get more capacity out of those networks that might have been laid 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. You just keep investing and evolving in technology to get more out of the networks as the demand for applications from consumers and from businesses grow.